So today is lesson 10. So we are going to go over our tutorial assignment. That is your final assignment in place of a final exam. Um, that assignment your, um, will be due in four weeks on the Thursday night. And then there's an in-class component in our final class on Friday, April 22nd. But I think we'll wait probably typically Friday morning if we have some late arrivals. So I'll maybe introduce the, the assignment uh, when we come back from our, our first break around 10 o'clock. So what we want to start to do today is we want to rebuild the Project Tracker app that we have built as a Node, Express, MongoDB, and Handlebars application. Um, so we're going to basically rebuild it as two separate applications that talk to each other. So we're going to build an Angular front-end application. It'll be a single-page application. And then all of our back-end, our Node Express, will be a back-end server. And they'll communicate together. So we're going to rebuild, start today by rebuilding our Node Express server. And it's simply going to be done as a REST API. Now, we're familiar with REST APIs. We did build these last semester with ASP.NET, um, where we scaffolded out. An API controller. So we're going to basically convert our existing Express controller into an API. So rather than rendering HBS views, it's simply going to send and receive JSON. And then we will integrate our Angular front end application that can create, read, update, and delete data by making API calls to our back end. So the current application that we've got, our job tracker, you know, it does work. We can do create, read, update, and delete. We created that application kind of skeleton or shell with the express generator. And right now in our existing project tracker, we've got four layers to it. We have our database in the back end, which we are hosting in MongoDB. And maybe. And I'll also just load up the repository so we can poke through it a bit. So here's our database layer, lives in the MongoDB cloud. And we have three other separate layers in our node and express application. So we have our models, like our employer model that uses Mongoose to interface with our database in the back end. We've got our controllers, our logic layer, where our employer's controller uses our model to make all of the create, read, update, and delete calls. And in the front end, we have a view layer with our HBS templates that use our handlebar syntax. So we've got basically a four layer application right now. The three MVC layers that are built within Node and Express and then our back end in MongoDB. So we're gonna rebuild this, but we're going to remove the views from the node and express. We're not going to use handlebars. For our front end, we're going to create it using Angular as an SPA single page application. So it's going to give a, a better user experience. All our CRUD operations will be handled on one page and the page will always show the data in real time. So we never have to refresh the page. So we can see a list of employers and we can add, edit, and delete all on a single page. So that's going to involve a restructuring or refactoring. So we're actually going to rebuild right from scratch. We'll copy a few of our existing components in rather than rewriting them. We're going to have a stripped down server application. So we are going to use Express and Node for our server, but rather than using the Express generator, which gives us a lot of stuff we don't need, we're going to create that server application from scratch. We're just going to make a directory and then we're going to add the files that we need manually. We're still going to use have our database layer, MongoDB. We're going to use the same model. So we'll just import or copy our existing employer model 
that uses Mongoose for our object document mapping. And we're gonna build a new controller, but this time our controller is going to be a REST API. So all our controller methods do is send and receive JSON based on the URL pattern in the HTTP method. So very much like we did when we created API controllers last semester with ASP.NET Core. Now, so this is just a back end. There's no front end at all in our Node Express application. We're then going to use the Angular CLI that we used last week to build a new client application. So we're going to have two separate apps, a back end server using Node and Express and a front end client using Angular. And then our Angular app is going to have three layers. Now we used two of them last week. We're going to use an Angular, we're going to use HTML views in Angular, like we used last week. So we're going to make one page and that single page is going to allow us to create, read, update, and delete. We'll have a component layer. We generated an Angular component last week. So the component's job basically is to handle the logic and the data for our view. And we're going to create one other element, Angular element called the service. Um, any guesses? If you look at kind of the list of layers, what do you suppose the service might do? If you look at the different layers of our server and client app, we've created all these things before except for an Angular service. So what role do you think that service might play? If you look at where it sits in this stack. Uh, yeah, Colton, that's, yeah, you're on the right track. So the service, this is the interface that will communicate between the backend server and the Angular front end. So this is like the link that will make those calls to the API, return and fetch the data, and then pass the data forward to the component. So you're, cool. you're on the right track. So for example, when our view, when we want to, let's say, display a list of employers, this request is going to pass through each layer of the stack. The view will call it from the component. The component calls the service. The service calls our REST API, our Express controller. Our controller uses the model and the model will fetch the data from MongoDB, and then the data passes all the way back up the chain. So it is a fair bit more complicated. Again, in our existing job tracker, we only have these four layers that the data moves through. When we break it up this way, it's actually going to go, the data will move across six layers. So there's four layers in between our front end in our database. In this case, two layers in the server, our models and controllers, and two layers in the Angular client, our services and our components. So we are gonna have to add a fair, more, fair bit of code, and it is more complex, but it gives us this rich single page application with real time data. It also means that we're gonna be running two different applications simultaneously. Our Server backend will run on port 3000, like you're, we're familiar with, because that's the default express port. And then our Angular client will run on port 4200, which is its default express port. So it's going to take us a couple of classes to put this all together. I'm not going to try to do this all in, in one class. It's too much to do. So we're, we'll work on it over the next couple of weeks. And then in two weeks, we'll look at how do we bundle these together? So how do we optimize them and kind of combine them, integrate our Angular client and our Node server, and then how do we deploy them up to our Heroku service? Okay, so we're gonna work on this. We're basically rebuilding our job tracker as a full stack application, and we'll do it, we'll, we'll take our time and we'll spread it out over the next three weeks. So looking at our calendar as to what's going on, 
So we're going to build this. So today we're going to start. We're going to continue on next week. In two weeks, we'll look at the bundling and deployment, which is a bit complicated, but it should be fairly short class. Couldn't take us too long that day, maybe an hour. And then there is no lesson 13. It's actually Good Friday. So we're not going to have any new content. And then your tutorials where you guys get to teach the class will be on our final class. Uh, whoops, I should just pick the date there. That is uh, on April the Final class will be April 22nd. Okay, so that's kind of where we're going, starting this process of building our full stack app today. And we will evolve it over the next several weeks. Okay, any questions about kind of the plan or the direction of where this is going? So we're going to start today by building the server API. And then we should have some time to at least create our Angular client app and start building it. But we'll focus on the server end first. So we're going to rebuild our server, but we're going to convert it into a REST API. It's only JSON in and out. So we're not going to use the express generator. So what I'd like you to do is go into your file system and go into the folder where you build your node application. So wherever your existing job tracker application is, we're just going to go back into that same root folder. And I'm going to make a new empty folder here. I'm just going to make a new folder, and I will call it jobs slash server. So this is going to be the back end API that uses Node and Express. So it's just an empty folder. So make a folder called jobs server. Later on, we'll make a folder called jobs client using the Angular CLI that we used last week. But we'll deal with the server. We have some work to do in the server end first. And then I'm just going to open this up open up my new empty folder in Visual Studio Code. So there's nothing here. So the first thing we want to do is initialize NPM, which will build out a package.json file for us. So we can open up our terminal. And if we run the command npm init minus y, the minus y just means say yes to all of the prompts. So we'll run npm init, let's put it in the chat for you, minus y. So this just builds and previews package.json. So now I've got a package.json file here. And now we want to install the NPM packages that our backend is going to need. So we're not going to use any authentication. We don't need Passport or any of the Passport packages, but we're going to need five other packages. So I'm going to install them all in a single line, and I will also put the line in the chat for you. Clear my terminal, and we'll run the command npm i. We're going to need express. We're going to need body parser. Now, normally when we use the express generator, it includes the body parser. So the body parser is needed so our API can process form posts or updates and deletes. And we're going to have a form in our front end when those forms are submitted. In order to be able to read the values from the form, we need the body parser package. Uh, we need Mongoose. And we're also going to use our environment file. So we need .env. 
So I'm going to install these four packages. Express, body parser, mongoose, and .n. So I'll hit enter and we'll install those packages. It updates our package.json and adds our packages here to node mode. Okay, if, if you need me to review anything at any point, just let me know. We should also, while we're setting things up, may as well just set up a git ignore file right now. So I'm just going to make a new file. Dot git ignore. So the first character there is a dot. And in here, I'm just going to add node modules and dot env. So when I upload this to GitHub later, the node modules and the environment file, which we'll create, those won't get included in our Git repository. Now we've got a, a few files in our original job tracker that we can simply copy. I want the environment file because it's got our database connection already set up. It's got a few other things we don't really need, but we want the database connection. We also want our employer model. So I'm going to copy, I'm just going to go back to my file system and copy those two things. So I'm going to go into my job tracker. And I'm going to copy the .env folder, sorry, the .env file and the models folder. Now there is a user model in here as well. We don't need that, so we're going to get rid of it. So just go to your original job tracker. Again, if you need these files, you can also copy them from my Git repository. So I'm just going to copy both of those. and paste those into the job server. Okay, so we've got our environment file as well as the models folder. And I can see these now in my file explorer. Now there's some stuff in here we don't need because this application is gonna be a little simpler. So our user model inside the models folder you can keep it there, but we're not going to use it. So I'm just going to delete it. It's not required, but there's no point, as far as I'm concerned, no point having a file that I know we're not going to use. So I'm just going to get rid of it. So our, this application is going to be totally public. There's not going to be authentication on it. And in my environment file, I can also get rid of these keys, the session secret and our GitHub API keys and callback. We're not using any of these things, so we could delete them. Right? We're not managing sessions on the server and we're not logging in on the server application. So all I really need is this database URL. Again, you don't have to make those changes, but I'm just stripping out anything that I know we're not using. So I've got my model and my environment file copied. The next two things that we're going to do are we're, we are going to create our controller, but we're going to create it from scratch. We're not going to import or copy the controller um, because this, we're building a, sim a much simpler version of the controller. So I'm going to need to create a controllers folder and an employer's controller. And then we're going to build, again, a sort of a stripped down version of our app.js, where we have some of the things that we had in our original 
job tracker application, but there was a lot of stuff in there we don't need. So we're just gonna code it from, from scratch. We will hand code it. I'm gonna make a new folder, which I'll call controllers. And I'm gonna make a new JS file in here, in the controllers file folder, I will make employers plural.js. So we'll add just a few kind of starting lines in here, and then we'll build out the CRUD methods one at a time later. First we'll do a get, and then we'll do a post, and then update, delete. We're probably not gonna to get to all of that today, and that's fine. So we're gonna ex require express, just like in every controller. And we'll create an express router. And we'll also link to our model. So these three lines are exactly the same as in the controller we already have. We'll export it. Down at the bottom. So all our methods will go inside of here. We'll just kind of make an empty controller for now. Like I said, we will flesh out the methods for create, read, update, and delete one at a time. So we will return to this file several times and work on it. But so far, there's, there really should be nothing new here. This is just a general express controller at this point, and we've linked it to our model class. How are we doing so far? Questions, problems from anybody? So our next step is gonna to be to create the app.js. And once we do that, we can come back and start to write our first method in the controller and we can actually try it out in our browser. So I'm gonna just go back, click on my package.json just to get out of my con controllers folder. I wanna be in the root. And now we're gonna make a new file here, which will be app.js. So this will be similar to the app.js we had previously, but again, a stripped down version because there was a lot of stuff in the express generated version that we don't need. So first we'll just add our references. We need express. We need body parser. And we'll need Mongoose to connect to MongoDB. So we create a new Express app. Again, all these lines you would find in our original job tracker. Just load it up here for a second. We can compare it. So if we look at app.js, it's got a lot of these things here. Here's Express. We're not, we don't need to worry about things like paths and cookies and logs and error creation. So we, I excluded a bunch of these dependencies. Here is our app being created. Now we do also need to tell our application to use the body parser so that it can process forms. 
Christ. because we will have form submissions when data is created using post or updated using put. So that's what this, that's why we're using the body first. And we'll use the same line of code. We've installed that, we've got our database connection living in our environment file. So when we're working on our development machine, we're not deployed in Heroku, we want to read the connection string. So if we're not in production mode, We want to use our .end and the end package so it can read the environment. In fact, what we should probably do is set this value in our .env. We should set it to develop. I mean, it doesn't matter. As long as it's not set to production, that value doesn't exist, our application will use the environment file. So this is optional, but I'm just making it a little more explicit that the node environment here is development. When we deploy it to the server, we will change that and set that value to production in our Heroku panel. We'll do that in a couple of weeks when we deploy all this. And now we can use Mongoose and our environment file to connect. The so same code, we're gonna read our database thing, I call it database URL. And then here's our callback. So we'll try to connect, we'll get some sort of response, and we'll log out one of two messages. If it works, Let's say we're connected to MongoDB, and if it fails, we will just catch getting my PHP and my <laughs> JavaScript mixed up. So try to connect this again, exact same code we've already got in our original application. If it connects successfully, we'll get this message in the console. And if anything goes wrong trying to connect to the database, it'll say connection error and we'll, it'll append on a description of the error. So now we're going to reference our controller. So this is the same. We're making a link to the employer controller. 
And now we're going to set out the path. This is going to be slightly different. In our, we'll just go and examine this line in our original job tracker first. Right, so we've we linked to the employers here. And then we map the path to it this way on line 100. We said when the URL was slash controller, domain slash controllers point to the control point to this controller. We're actually going to change the path a little bit. The common standard when we build a REST API, and it was the same when we used .NET Core, is the controller name should be prefixed with a folder called API. It's not absolutely necessary, but that's the convention. And so our controller reference is found at this URL, API slash employer. And then we can just call app.listen on port 3000. And we export it. So there's our complete 28 lines, including spaces. There's our app.js. So this should start our application, connect to MongoDB, and appropriately reference our employer's controller with this path, localhost 3000 slash API slash employer. We need to make one other tiny change in order to get this running. And that is in our package.json file. Right? We didn't go through all the individual prompts in package.json. We just said yes to all the defaults. And that's fine, except there's one change we need to make. So if we go to package.json, I want to change line 5. By default, it was looking for a file called index.js. Meaning if we just start the application, it will run index.js. Well, we don't have that file. So our startup script should be app.js instead. So change line five, change the word index to the word app. Now our API doesn't do anything yet because there are no methods in the controller, but we should actually be, actually be able to start it up. So how do we test this? Go to our terminal. And now if we just use nodemon, we'll see whether we get connected or not connected. So again, make sure you change the main to app.js. And the app should be running. We'll get an error in the browser but we can try going to localhost 3000. We won't, we haven't mapped any, we haven't mapped this URL. So actually we won't get anything here yet, but now we could try to go to API slash employers. Again, we're, we're not handling this path yet. So this won't respond, but that's okay. Oh, okay, it's saying, interesting. We may not even need body parser anymore. We'll see, we can, maybe we can even take that out. We may not even need the body parser. Okay, so this is just gonna hang. Our request never gonna get fulfilled here. So we'll actually write a get method in our controller, 
stop this at. So let's write a get method so that when a user makes a get request at this URL, we'll use our model and we will go and fetch all of the employers from MongoDB and return those in JSON format. So we will go to the employers controller. We've kind of stubbed out the controller, but there are no methods here. Yes. So we will fetch all employer documents. So in our route, because this is our path that we've already set up in app.js, when we get a request, an API slash employers call the controller root. And we'll use our typical express callback with our request and response parameters. So we will use mongoose fetch and return. So we've referenced our model up here, and we'll just call the find method with no parameters. So find all the employers, and we will get back one of two things. We'll either get an error, or we will get back a list of employers in JSON. So if we have an error, We're just going to return a response in JSON format. So we can call response.json and we'll pass in this error message. And we can also give it a status, an HTTP status code. We can use 400. Anybody know what HTTP status 400 means? I mean, we all know what 404 means. It means resource not found. Yeah, thank you, Ralph. So client errors. So bad request. So if they try this and we can't get if any error, we'll send back a 400 response. Okay, so we're going to send back both the error and the 400 status. If we don't get an error, again, we're going to send a JSON response, and we're just going to send this whole data set, everything that comes out of the database, could be one employer, could be a million employers, we don't care. We're going to send that. And what status should we send in this case? So if we, what sort of successful response code would you send? What HTTP response? Um, could be accepted, let's see, received but not yet acted upon. So we could, I'd probably recommend a different one that more accurately describes. Right? Yeah, probably 200, right? That the resource has been fetched and transmitted. So if we have a successful GET request, we're going to send a 200.
So our API is going to do, this method's now going to do one of two things. It's either going to send a 400 bad request response and an error, or it will send a 200 OK response with a big J a JSON object. So now we can try this out in our browser. Save that. I'm going to go back here, and again, I'm going to try to go to localhost 3000 slash API slash employers. Let's see what comes back. I was hoping this would work. Doesn't look like it's going to, but we will figure it out. May have to look in our terminal, open my terminal as well. So it says I'm connected, not getting any errors. Hmm. I'm not sure what's going on. Let's see. I'm just actually going to stop my server. I'm going to start it again. It says I'm connected. Um, I might comment out our body parser is complaining about this. Okay, so we're almost there, not quite right. Should be loading. I'm going to comment out. Oh, the problem is here. Not so much the body parser is wrong, is that my line of code is incomplete. This should be .json. We want our body parser to use JSON, so to interpret HTTP requests in JSON format. Let's see if this makes a difference. I'm not sure. We may be able to remove that reference entirely. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah, that was the issue. Sorry, I missed the call to body parser. JSON. So now when I load my list of employers, we get a JSON object with all of the documents that are in our MongoDB. I'm curious, I'm just, uh, I'm not sure if it'll work with or without the body parser. So add this body parser.json here. Go back and refresh and you should get a JSON object with all of the data in your, um, in your employer's collection in MongoDB. So our, our backend API is running now. It isn't complete because we've only got a get method. There's no post, there's no put, and there's no delete. But this gives us a starting point. So what we can do, I'm gonna upload this to GitHub, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, I'm going to go over the tutorial assignment before we jump back into this. And then we're gonna start building our Angular front end. So our backend, all it does is serve JSON, and we're gonna create an Angular front end that can connect to and talk to the API, and we will want to display all of our data in our Angular front end application. We should be able to do that. We may even be able to build a form in Angular so that we can create new employers and then move into updating and deleting next week. 
So I'm going to create a new Git repository for this. And I will upload to GitHub right now. So if you're behind, if you're missing anything, you can grab it. Um, and then we will come back in 10 minutes.